When Charlie Tepperoni was nine years old, he packed his knapsack, left a note on the kitchen table, and ran away to Van Cortland Park. He stayed there for seven hours. Then, since he found no reason to stay there any longer, he packed his knapsack and came home. As Charlie grew older, he kept going away, and he kept coming back. Only now he would venture further than the city limits. And always the reason for staying in one place eluded him. But the search continued. For who knows where one might come upon the blessed tie that binds. How's it there? Uh, soup, please. Oh, uh, split pea, French onion, chicken and barley. Onion, fr French, French onion. like this for? Now, look, man, I told you to take a couple of hours off, didn't I? Huh? Well, gee, if we don't do it this way, Pepper will take the phones away. I think he fainted. Hey, I think he's dead. He isn't moving. What? What are you talking about? We hardly touched him. We just shook him up a little. I can't hear a thing. For crying out loud. For crying out loud, I knew we shouldn't have gotten into this business. Call the police, Carm. Are you out of your head? It was an accident. George, you and Lester pick him up. Take him out the back, put him in the car, we'll have to bring him someplace. Carm, you're out of your mind! Tell your brother, knock it off, you hear, Carmine? Please. Charlie, you didn't, you didn't see a thing, you understand? You didn't see a thing. Karen, please!
Hi, Doc. Victor Clay. Got pushed around a little. Not enough to kill him. I'd say it was a heart attack. What's that on his coat? Looks like Chuck. Who's he? He found the body. Don't do any good. He doesn't want to talk. What's his name? First name's Arnold. Don't tell me his last. Arnold, would you like a cigarette? Pick up and walk, and look for a place to rest. Did you rest in the warehouse last night? I should have let him lay. He could be resting. We have to find the people that hurt him, Arnold. Why? If they're not running, someone else runs. Did you hear them running? How many would you say there were? Two, four, or more? Did they talk? Did you hear anything? You do this all the time, boy. Looking for running people. I'm a police officer. Until I have a job to do, I'd like you to help me. You're a good boy. You give me a dollar, I could get a drink. Okay, Arnold. Did you see? Did you hear? What did you hear? Macaroni. Gets me the way they put them up. Come on, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. You know, a bunch of people get together, figure it out, come every day, and up it goes. Charlie, Charlie. I've been to a lot of towns, Carmine. I've seen a lot of stuff. And I can't help thinking what might happen if you don't do it right. The paper says he died of a heart attack. It's not like we're guilty. Right. So all you have to do is go down there and tell them. Size that thing. I wonder if that guy likes doing that every day. They asked me to talk to you. They're afraid of you, Charlie. They want you to leave town. Crime don't pay. Bubblegum cards, remember? Hey! You like doing that every day? I'm going back to the cab. George still has his plumber's card, and Lester's going back to the bakery. Right. We'll go down there, walk in, give our names, tell them what happened, tell them you didn't want him to die. The police like that kind of thing. They respect that kind of thing. I've seen movies, people get to be heroes doing that kind of thing. Lester thought maybe Albuquerque. Boy, that pepper's sore as the devil. Naturally, you gotta make a guy pay off, otherwise they spit on you all the time, take away your franchise. It's decided, Charlie. It's all settled. You go. I've been to Albuquerque. Don't go anywhere. Denver. I'm not a pigeon, Carmine. Maybe they'll pick you up. Maybe they'll get you down there. You know how the cops are. They can make a guy talk. Will you feel better if I go? I'll make you feel safer? OK, I'll go. Tomorrow. 
什么玩意儿？ Meticulous person, Victor. He always took off his coat, got down to work. Made me proud to be head of the department. We're holding a memorial service for him in the morning. Miss Morley, was there anything bothering him? Did he indicate anything? No. He just did his job. He loved numbers. Once Victor and I were having lunch, and he, he told me that he was planning on doing a study about people who make a life of numbers. Did he have any, any responsibilities in handling the school funds? What are you implying? No, certainly not. Well, did he have any outside business interests that you knew about? I only know, Mr. Flint, that he was a very fine man. A very fine man. He taught algebra? Calculus, trigonometry. And she said everybody liked him. That's quite a good trick, to teach algebra and be liked. I flunked. I had a teacher, his name was Mr. Crest. Coughed all the time. I guess he was allergic to chalk. Well, somebody didn't like him. Let's start over. Now, they broke his watch when? Um, 3.13. Time of school out, three? Oh, and he left right away. You got a car? No. Well, it's about a 13-minute radius from the school on foot, by bus or subway. This happened in the city, and he was in a hurry to get there. The old man heard more than one voice and something about macaroni, whatever kind of a cockamamie clue that is. He had chalk on his coat. Well, he's a school teacher. He's got chalk in his life. Well, she claims that he always took his coat off, that he was a very meticulous man. But there are other places that have chalk. Well, let's start with the pool rooms. Frank, get a picture of them. I want you to check every pool room within a 10-block radius. Mike, this guy doesn't sound like the kind of guy that hangs around pool rooms. So, Churchill lays bricks. Is, is this Gladys Hopper? Speaking. Oh, well, uh, 
you don't know me, but my name is Charlie Tepperoni. Who? Uh, Charlie uh, Tepperoni. I, I live right across the street from you, and, and I can see you on your way to work every now and then, and uh, sometimes weekends in the park, and uh, where you work in the cafeteria. As a matter of fact, I had French onion today. Is this Sid from the grocery store? Uh, no, 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 this is, this is Charlie, Charlie Tepperoni. I know who this is. It's Tony on vegetables. No, no, th th this isn't Tony. This, this is on the level. Because I've been living on this street for two years now, off and on, and, and, and I can look in your apartment from my apartment. Really? Miss Hopper, look, you've got me all wrong. I'm, I'm no peeping Tom. I don't do things like that. I just figured, uh, well, I'll probably leave town tomorrow. This is Marvin Honeycutt. You're not funny, Marvin. No, no it's Charlie Tepperoni. And, and I just figured, well, maybe I could buy you a drink or a, an ice cream or something. Uh, you, you look, you'll see I've got blue curtains. Second floor. You looking? Well, so you got a blue curtain. What's that make you, Saint? <laughs> oh, no. It's just, uh... Well, I like the way you look. And everything about you. Well... I, I don't even know who you are or uh, what you look like or... Well, for that matter, exactly what's on your mind. You see, I, um, I, I've never had such an unusual call. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll go out and stand on my stoop, and, and you come out and, and look at me, and uh, if you're interested, fine. And if you're not, well, I'm not going to push uh, Miss Hopper, and uh, I'll probably be leaving town tomorrow. I'll never... Hello? Well, I didn't call to make you mad, so I'll go on the stoop and that'll be it. Uh, goodbye. Hi. my suit from you. You don't recall my face? No. Well, I guess you meet a lot of people in your profession. My profession? Well, actually, you do have to give the right portion. Not too much, not too little. I mean, it takes a professional eye, doesn't it? My family should only see me. But I came here from Philadelphia to study painting. I talked my father into it. That was four years ago. Well, did you go to art school? Well, yes. My daddy said, I'll, uh, I'll send you for a year. And if I like what you paint, well, I'll send you for another year. So what happened? Well, I, I sent him a lot of my stuff at the end of the first year. And he sent me a telegram saying, uh, well, I don't like it. Come home. That's all it said. Not even 10 words. Listen, would uh, you like some pie or something? All right. 
what's going on here. Please, and two teas. Do you like art, Mr. Tepperoni? Yeah, I like art. What kind? Uh, you, 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 the kind that, uh, you know? If I see something that strikes me, I'll buy it. I don't really mean that I'll buy it, but I'll like it. There's a vast difference between you and me. Like what? Well, I've been watching you very carefully. Now, I, I admit I stay home more than I would like to. Perhaps that makes I'd... two of us. I mean, on Wednesday nights, there's a poker game, but you know. No, 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 no. There is a difference. I have certain things that I really like. A book now and then, or, or paintings, or the museum, or listening to music. You know, I love good music. Those are and important I... things. That is exactly what I'm talking about. I say to you, how do you like the custard pie? And you, you say, yeah, it's, it's pie. Well, uh, before when I said, uh, what kind of art do you go for? Well, you shrugged. And then you made some kind of hand movements. Well, you told me you, you, you were going to Albuquerque. And I asked you why. Well, you, you, you really weren't even sure yourself, you know. No, I told you I was going down there on a sales job. Oh, yes, I know that. But, but it's like you keep everything inside of you. Well, what I mean, Mr. Tepperoni, is uh, you don't have a point of view. I don't know who you are. That scares me a little bit. Don't you see what I mean? Yeah. You want to go home? Success in Albuquerque, Mr. Tepperoni. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for... I'm glad I got off the diamond call. Miss Hopper. I guess you're right about a point of view.
Flint. How are you? I remember. Have a seat. I think maybe there were three of them. Three, four, it's hard to say. And it wasn't macaroni. It was tepperoni. I couldn't breathe in my bed last night. Mina looked at me, I had to tell her it was the allergy. And now you come up with this, I can't take it. Charlie promised me he'd go, then he changed his mind. What do you want me to do? Talk to him again. Maybe we could all raise some money. My mother has some money. She'll give it to me. I'll tell her I'm finally going to business school. He ain't interested in money. That won't solve. Well, something's got to solve. Look, I want you to know that I believe in my brother, and so should you. He's a basically honest person. You call him honest, I wouldn't trust him. He never seems to be anywhere, want anything, have any interest. How can you trust a man like that? He doesn't care about anything. I agree. And if anything happens? Oh, why'd I listen to you, George? I should have just stayed in business. What business? You've been in hot for years. When Wolfie died, it was you that said, we dropped an up betting with him. Let's try to take over the book. All right, come on, keep quiet. So we took over the book. And look where we are now. Will you shut up, both of you? Well, what are we gonna do? At least talk to him again. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure, I'll talk to him. I can't guarantee anything. Mike. I've called on 21 temperonis in 12 pool rooms. I'm getting no place. Well, keep going. Just be thankful you're not after a guy named Smith. How's Adam doing? Well, he's hit 19 temperonis and 10 pool rooms, which just goes to prove one thing. You like pool rooms, and he likes to talk. Get going. Thanks, Mike. Am I the only pepperoni in the city? There could be a hundred of them for all I know. 41 to be exact. We're going through the pepperonis now. Let's get back to the original question. Where were you yesterday between uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and 8 o'clock last night? Where was I yesterday? Where could I be? I was out hiking. You mind if I check the books just to keep you clear? In the office. Thank you. I'd like to take a look at yesterday's dispatch sheet. Deperoni was dispatched at uh, 12.04, check back in 8.23. Thank you very much. Let it be of help, officer. Roughed up a little, you know? Yes, sir. Don't break anything. Yes, sir. One piece. Would that be all, sir? Yeah, that's it. That will be two hundred dollars. Yeah. Sure. That's the one. Thank 
he did, as opposed to that last painter, was when he was trying to make color meaningful. He was basically an experimentalist. Do you like it? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's painting. No, no, well, what I mean is, is uh, it has a flavor. It goes uh, pow, pow, pow. But, uh, <laughs> Why am I making believe I know what I'm saying? I don't like it. Well, I love it, and I think it's brilliant. Yeah? Well, I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. Would you like to take me for a cup of coffee? I thought you liked tea. That is only when I'm scared. <laughs> Albuquerque. Detective Arcaro, how do you feel? Do you know who did it? No. Mr. Tepperoni, were you home yesterday? Yeah, all day. Why? Did anybody see you? He's in and out. He could have been here. Oh, he's a very fine tenant. Never trouble. He pays his rent on time. He was here. Yes, he was here yesterday. Do you have a job, Mr. Tepperoni? Not right now. And yet you always pay your rent on time. So I play the horses. I save up. My brother Carmine gives me a couple of... Uh, gives me a couple of bucks, so? Your brother Carmine, what does he do? Drives a hack. Charlie, were you leaving town? I was thinking about it. Why Albuquerque? Well, I got a job lined up down there. Construction development. You experience in that sort of thing? Yeah, you know. Okay, Charlie, I guess it's okay. If we need any more information, we'll call you. High school. Victor Clay alive. Victor Clay dead. Arnold. Arnold Macaroni. Carmine Tepperoni, taxi driver. He don't own nothing. Nice, substantial alibi. Guess who? Tepperoni's brother. Nicely beaten up with a ticket in his pocket for Albuquerque for a job at which he has no experience at all. You know what we got here? We got a lousy picture on the blackboard. Two days, two beatings, the name Tepperoni. If we could find out what the connection was between the two beatings, we may have the answer. Yeah? Oh, have her come in. Miss Morley. 
Hello, Mr. Morley. Come in. This is Detective Arcaro, Lieutenant Parker. How do you do, Mr. Morley? How do you do? Won't you sit down, Mr. Morley? Victor spoke in a mathematical way. Symbols, triangles, circles, geometrical figures of all kinds. We understood each other. Could I get you some water? Yes, please. He came to me once and asked to borrow some money. I let him have $150. Here you are. Thank you. He said he'd pay it back twice over. I told him I wasn't gambling on him, that I trusted him. He showed me a system he'd worked on. I remember his words. He said that since the time of the Greeks, no one's been able to find the answer. He thought he had. But he was quite excited about it. Us? Horses. Well, that accounts for the chalk. You know where he placed his bets? He never told me. Did he ever mention any names? No. I want you to check all the pool rooms. I want you to turn every bookmaking joint upside down within a ten block radius. Pump your informers. You guys know what to do. Thank you, Miss Morley. Charlie, when, when people get scared, they do stupid things. You know that. Candy. It's not just for me. It's for your own sake. Charlie, if you don't leave town, I can't control the situation. Please, Charlie. For your own sake. I know I promised you I'd go, but... Uh... I just can't do it right now. grown-up city and Albuquerque's still in diapers. Guess that's true. Let's walk. You ever paint a tree? No. Mostly I painted people. That man over there? I'd paint him. I guess he's like a tree in his own way. You like trees? I wrote a poem once about a tree. Do you remember it? It was about eight years ago. A place called Winnie Gander. <laughs> I was working for a trucking outfit down there. I used to have this trip across town every day. And at lunchtime, I'd stop at this one certain spot on the south side of town, and I'd have my lunch by this tree. You know, I really look forward to having lunch with that tree. Sort of like a friend, you know? Do you remember the poem? It was not really a poem. It's, um, it's more of a paragraph. It's all right. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> there is, when it's lunch, on the south side of town in a place called East Winnegander, a tree that has grown with patience and its limbs took time to meander. Its roots are all mixed up like a city of lovers 
who feel safe in their own dark sun. I never told that to anybody. Charlie? Glad you stayed. You want to run? Why? <laughs> well, it's a good day. I feel like running. Come on. to take such a chance and lose it? It. You. Don't you call me it. But you are it. Don't you know how many miles I've looked? I know that you call me on a telephone and that you tell me that there's nothing in the hand it, and I believe you. Well, you lied, Charlie. Now, how do you... How do you think that makes me feel? Well, how do you think it makes me feel having people running after me in automobiles, getting into my apartment, beating me up? Don't you think I could have run? Then they wouldn't have to worry that I shouldn't talk about what I shouldn't talk about. And I wouldn't have to worry that I'd be alive tomorrow. But I didn't run. Isn't that what you've been telling me? Don't run? Take a point of view? Be somebody? Well, a man has to have a good enough reason for that, and I found a good enough reason. And now you're going to shut a door in my face! Gladys! Charlie? They're down the corner, Charlie. 
George and Lester, and a guy who makes his living killing people. Don't worry, come on, I'm going. Don't you worry, I'm easy. I'm going. It's the only way, Charlie. A girl, Carm. That I could talk to. She had a way of looking at me, let me tell you, a whole new world. And there it is, across the street. Thirty seconds and I'm there. Color schemes like I never saw before. And all the colors had colors. <laughs> all began to come together. It's like a parade, and you're in it. <sighs> What's the difference? I'm calm. Come out the back door. Cops. He's gonna tell him. Eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them.
This has been a Screen Gems film presentation. Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer. <laughs>